since our work will depend on us using applications that can contact GitHub, we may have to or may very well need to install Git. And uh, let's get that started pretty quick. A Windows 10 Git installation, um, just doing a quick Google search. Uh, this is the website you want, git-scm.com. Uh, depending on your system, by the way, if you have a uh, Macintosh computer, Git should already be installed. When I get to the point of this video, when we're checking what uh, version it's running, you can run that in your terminal to find out. The version that we're downloading is 2.28.0, 2.28.0, and selecting Windows. Downloading is starting. And it'll go into my download folder, depending on how fast my connection is. Uh, it might take the full five minutes, so whenever that's done, I'll come back to the video. And it's just about done. So, you know, in all the software that we download for this class, maybe you're noticing that some of it says that it's 64-bit, some of it may say that it's 32-bit. Most modern machines, if you bought your computer in the last few years, less than five years ago, it, you probably have a 64-bit 64 64 machine, um, and you want to stick to 64-bit applications. 32-bit is the uh, older technology, uh, and it runs well still on 64-bit, but 64-bit uh, applications for 64-bit systems are toned and honed for that system. I'm going to follow the download show in the folder and here's my download I'll double click on the uh, installation for git 2.28.0 64-bit and it's asking me to see if I wanted to make changes I accepted uh, okay, so the GNU General Public License uh, starts. I actually do want uh, an icon on the desktop, just to have a shortcut. Everything else I'll accept. I uh, use Atom as Git's default editor. It's actually something that I want. You may still not have Atom in installed, but when you do, that's a good option. There's other editors that you can use, but we'll be using Atom here. Sublime is pretty good too, but let's stick to Atom. I'll click on next. Actually, did I go too fast? Yes. Um, use Git from Git Bash only. No, let's use uh, from the command line as well and from third-party software because some, some third-party software is actually going to get installed. Minty. Uh, we'll use the OpenSSL library. Uh, check out Windows style, commit Unix style line endings, uh, it's good. Uh, we will use Minty as mentioned. Click next. Uh, default is fine on this option. Uh, Git credential manager, okay. Enable file system caching, enable symbolic links, actually the top one only. And then this one is to enable experimental support. Uh, just ignore that and install. And uh, now it's going to uh, get all the files together and toss them out in different directories and uh, get this thing going. I want to pause for a little bit because this takes a while, maybe, and I'll be right back. And it didn't take that long, so I'm back here. It's completing the Git setup wizard. I uh, don't need to see the release notes, but I'm going to launch Git Bash to start off. Here's Git Bash. Git Bash basically is a modified version of the command line. This works very much like uh, a Unix terminal, although it's running on Windows. Actually, since we're running Windows 10, if we were using PowerShell, we would have almost a true Unix uh, environment. And uh, Minty, uh, we can we can do several things with it. Uh, the first thing that I would do is see if it knows who you are so i'll put in a command git config and ask for the username which i do believe is just user dot name and oh well it would help to spell it correctly user dot name and it knows my name and let's see if it knows my email address 
user email. And it knows that I am wearedt at gmail.com, which I've used in GitHub before. So maybe it remembers it from the uh, uh, previous installation. At this point, Git is installed in my system, and it should be installed in yours as well. And the hopes that when you use Git-dependent applications, it knows who you are, it knows what your email is. If uh, you get errors indicating that the application doesn't know who you are, what your email is, uh, please contact me. I will share some additional Git commands that will allow you to uh, change your email address and, uh, and define better who you are in the Git environment. Oh, and before I forget, well, actually, I did forget. I had already finished recording this video when I watched it again, and I realized if you've never used a command line, uh, similar to Minty or uh, command line before. Maybe you saw me type some things and then things reappeared and appeared. And the way that that works is uh, if I made a mistake or if I wanted to do the same thing, same command again, or something similar, I ha all I have to do is press the up arrow on the cursor keys and that will give me the last command that I typed. If I do it again, it'll go back. And again and again and actually it will even remember that uh, misspelled word this will give me the opportunity to use the cursors to go and make corrections if i want to so i could just say username there again or simply type the up arrow again and delete the word name and replace it with email just a little tidbit of how to use the command line um, and that's it for installation of Git for now.